Hey, before we get into the episode, I just want to tell you about my free astrology newsletter called The Starsologer. It comes out every Sunday. It's a lot of interest for astrologers. I explore cosmic currents moving through the ever-changing skies. Most weeks I explore what's coming up in the week and also share some astrology sticky bits and throw in some ideas about buzzing around. I, you also get stretched with my Extend Yourself sections. So this newsletter is for aspiring astrologers or anyone who's trying to up their astrological knowledge. It's totally free and you can sign up at starsology.com forward stroke newsletter. Now let's get into the show. Welcome to the Starsology Astrology Podcast. I'm your host, Alison Price, and I'm here with my good friend and co-host, Arwen O'Neill. Hello, Alison. It's great to be here again. Thank you so much for joining me again. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about the major aspect pattern of the T-square. Yeah. So T-squares are one of those patterns that tend to pop up in many, many charts. It's very common. Yes. And um, specifically, a T-square is formed when you from three planets. You have two planets that are in opposition, and those two planets square another planet. Right. So it makes this T-shape within the chart. Yeah. Now, some charts will have no T-squares, like you and me. We don't have T-squares. Other charts will have one uh, T-square, and then some charts can have multiple T-squares. Yeah. And um, we've got a couple of examples we're going to chat about as well. Yeah. But in general, this is a major aspect pattern that people are aware of. And if you're an astrologer, you need to be able to talk about it because everyone's aware of their squares and oppositions because they're living with them. Yeah, exactly. And the thing that's interesting to me about T-squares is that they will all be in one um, modality. Yes. So that's super reinforcing. So the modalities are? The modalities are uh, mutable, cardinal, and fixed. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have a, a T-square or, or, or a square, obviously, it, they will be in the same modality. And that will be, yes. you know, different elements, but the modalities. So if you have them in a fixed sign, that will have a very different character from if you have a mutable T-square yes. from if you have a cardinal T-square. And those will almost write a story in and of themselves. Yes. So if you say, oh, I've got a cardinal T-square and it involves... We know what that means. Yeah. Yes. If it, you know, like it's got, it involves my, my sun, my, my uh, Saturn and my Mars, you're like, wow. Uh, so let, tell that me... That is the story tell then. Tell me about your mother. Right? <laughs> Or yes. father. Yeah, exactly. And there's a whole tale that comes. It is. Yeah. Um, so, and, and not to say that it wouldn't happen if, uh, and, and so the comparative, what's the word? The, the comparative thing to this would be the um, the grand trine. Right. That would be kind of like the, the, the sister or the opposite um, place or pattern. And that would be if they're all in the same element and you have three planets that are trying to each other. Right. But this is the, the, Hard aspect version. It's the hard aspect version, and this is why it's important. This is why people are aware of it. Astrologers need to be able to interpret them because, as you know, we do love our hard aspects. They're the aspects, particularly the square. They're the ones when I say they get you off the couch and you're dealing with them. Yeah, it's just like comments, right? Like you can read like 10 good (laughs) comments and you're like, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever. One bad comment, you're like, what do they mean by that? That's right. Remember it forever. Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. So in general, if you've got a square in, in your chart, it's an internal dilemma within yourself. Yeah. And the oppositions are your external dilemmas. Yeah. But they're both dilemmas that the person is saying, what about this? Should I have done that? Let me do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. She yeah. needs to do that. It's her fault. And they're constantly, or anyone is constantly grinding through their squares and oppositions. Yeah. And whether in the T-square, it's a cohesive bunch of three planets that's telling a story. Yeah. And what's the difference between, let's say, a square and a T-square? That would be just one extra planet involved. Yes, yes. And so a square would be two planets at 90 degrees to each other. Absolutely. And then a grand cross would be if there's four. Yes. So that's like extra, extra. That's square. extra, extra. <laughs> but T-squares are more common Much than grand crosses, so way that's why we're kind of looking at it. Exactly. So in general, when you're interpreting a T-square, the energy of the two planets that are in opposition is flowing towards the focal planet, which is the one at the sharp end. Yeah. It's the one that's being squared by two serious planets. Yeah. And it's almost as though these two planets, I don't want to say, are ganging up and putting their energy towards that focal planet. And yeah. that's where the energy 
is expressed through that sign and house yeah. where that particular planet is. Yeah, so that planet has a lot of work to do. It does. In the chart. And the way that the way that charts work is that frequently then you, that planet will probably have help. It's probably not going to be the only aspect that planet makes. And we can talk about this with our examples that come up, but mm -hmm. usually you'll find that that planet also then has some trines or some sextiles that can kind of, or maybe even like a, a conjunction where it's kind of, maybe even a loose conjunction where the conjunction is between those two planets, but it doesn't actually pull it into the T-square. Otherwise they would have two T-squares. Um, but maybe it can kind of take the pressure off a little bit and we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. But, uh, it's, it's, it's yeah. pretty dynamic. It's interesting yeah. that neither you nor I have T-squares. Yeah. Aren't we just the lucky ones? Well, but people, we plenty of squares, but <laughs> not a T-square. But no T-squares. Yeah. 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 So in general, when you're using, let's just clear that up. The orbs yeah. I use for T-squares and, and are squares and oppositions are eight degrees. Mm. So the example chart we're just going to have a look at, and if you click through to the blog post on this episode, it, we've got the chart there for Elton John. Yes, Sir um, Elton John, actually. Hey? <laughs> Sir Elton John. Oh, sorry. I think <laughs> Sir Elton. We've got the yeah. chart for Sir Elton. Yeah. Not to be confused with Reginald Dwight. Right. But um, so he's got a T-square. He's got the moon is opposition Chiron and both the moon and Chiron square Pluto. Yeah. Yeah. So the Pluto is the focal. So the Pluto is the focal planet and Pluto is in Leo. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the 12th house. Yeah. So, yeah, so we've got this, this quite, there is a question about his birth time, so yeah, that moon is. might be moved slightly either here or there. Yeah. Uh, but the chart we're using, which we just happen to have, is going to em embroil the moon yeah. in Taurus, which is exalted, which is a good place for the moon, and yeah. then Chiron in Scorpio, thank yeah. you very much, uh, pointing towards that Pluto. Yeah, and regardless of the birth time, that is yeah. accurate. The T-square will be the same or similar, uh, well, yes. If yes. it's if it's further off, then the moon may move further. But the moon's pretty tight on the square to Pluto. The yeah. moon's at ten, yeah. Pluto's at eleven, and Chiron's at seven. So it's pretty yeah. tight. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you have a very different chart uh, for a different time, yeah, there's a few different birth times from out there. He does have like a D rating, uh, uh, but, but it's still it's a great example because it's a great example. I mean, who doesn't know Elton John? Exactly. And it, there you've got Pluto. Yeah. In Leo. Yeah. It's. <laughs> I mean, a generational placement. So he's definitely the, the voice of a generation in, in an insane way. The voice of a few different generations, clearly. Yes. That, that longevity and like working through personal trauma and personal issues yes. through his music and through his fame. And if anyone has seen the movie Rocket Man, which I watched on the plane, actually, and my partner and I may have had a few drinks before getting okay. on the plane and watching Rocket Man, and we were both, like, in tears watching this movie on the plane. And it's, I mean, I've loved Elton John since I was a little kid. Exactly. And so He's a showman. Friend. It's Leo. It's a showman. I would just, yeah, kill yeah. from that wardrobe, too. Oh. Oh, well, this, it's Leo. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> he, he was in Vegas all those years with yeah. a red piano, you know? Totally, yeah. um, totally. totally um, Leo. Yeah. So another way of dealing with um, T squares is I just want to mention that is that you do have a thing called the empty space. Mm -hmm. Now that is the point where the fourth planet would be if it was a grand cross. Right. And you find this space specifically by taking the average of the three positions you have moon 10, Pluto 11, and Chiron 7. You add them together and divide it by three, including minutes, and you get an answer. Yeah. And that would, well, not that I've done it in my head, but uh, well, I haven't done it either. But we're going to get an answer of about nine degrees Aquarius right. something minutes. I yeah. don't have the, the full details. Yeah. But that is known as the empty space. And that is important because... Because there might be something there on his, in his chart. When a transiting planet comes and triggers here, yeah. it actually twangs the whole T-square. Yeah. But it's known, it's known technically as the empty space in a T-square. Yeah. And it's a sensitive point in his chart. Yeah. I don't have one. You don't have one. Right. But if you've got a T-square, you've got this sensitive point. And you know, know where that is, especially if it's in Aquarius, because... Pluto will be twanging it soon. Well, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have somebody who has multiple T-squares, they will have multiple um, empty spaces and the uh, specifically sensitive points yeah. in the zodiac where there's no planets, but you may connect to their chart because you maybe have your son at this position yeah. and you're twanging their T-square. Yeah. 
So that is um, important. And if you were doing an astrology exam, you'd have to calculate an empty space on it. And by doing the, add the three together, divide it by by three, and you get an exact number to yeah. calculate empty spaces. Yeah. So the tighter the planets are, the tighter the empty space will be. Yeah. Mm. Good point. So with anyone who's got a, a natal T-square, the interesting thing comes when a transit occurs. Yeah. Because any planet that transits uh, conjoins one of the planets in the T-square will actually make aspects to the other planets. Yeah. So, for instance, with Elton John's uh, thing, he's got Chiron at 7 Scorpio. When the sun gets to be 7 Scorpio, it conjoins Chiron, yeah. it opposes the sun, and it squares Mars. Right. Uh, sorry, Pluto. Right. Yeah. And um, by the same token, when the sun gets to the moon at 10 degrees Taurus, it will conjoin the moon, square Pluto, and oppose Chiron. Yeah. Right? And then, of course, by the same token, when any planet gets to Pluto's position at 11 Leo, the same thing happens. It conjoins Pluto and squares the moon and Chiron. But there's a sequence to this pattern. Right. So what happens is, by depending on the numbers of the degree that the planets are at, the earlier number is triggered first. So in this case, it would be Chiron at 7 degrees. He's always triggered first in yeah. this sequence. Then it's the moon at 10 degrees. Then it's Pluto. Right. So it doesn't matter whether the planet's connecting any of those. It will still trigger his sequence in Chiron, Moon, Pluto. And that's the story for Elton John. Mm-hmm. So every time something crops up, which is, let's face it, if it's the sun, it's every, yeah. every three months it's coming around. It's saying a Chiron issue event, uh, occurs. So what? He's feeling a bit unsure about yeah. something. He's feeling maybe a little weak. He's feeling a little uh, imposter syndrome, perhaps, because right. uh, that's Chiron. That gets triggered first. Yeah. The second thing that gets triggered is the moon. Yeah. So and that would be like exhaustion, maybe because he's performing all of these different gigs and different like cities and, and traveling and, and so much, and 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 doing these like decades worth of incredibly emotional songs, which he's written from the heart. Yes, and and it's an emotional response coming yeah. through, and he's, there's tears and dramas and yeah. champing at the bit. Yeah, and then the the third planet is going to be the Pluto, which is going to be. Well, to hell with it. You like it or you don't. I've done my best, this and that. But this pattern, Chiron, Moon, Pluto, exists in his life. Oh, that's so interesting. And things repeat. Yeah. So if you've got T-squares or your partner's got T-squares, the pattern repeats. Oh, that is fascinating. So every time any planet triggers a T-square, they're saying, and then I was feeling unsure, and then I got emotional, and then I thought to hell with you. And that's the pattern. Wow. No, I mean, it was just off the top of my head. Right, no, but that's exactly... That's that's, that's exactly how the pattern unfolds. This for is, this for is the, those three planets, and yeah. it could be different in, in your chart if you have three different planets involved. Exactly, in the but, but the pattern remains. Yeah, the pattern happens. So people will say, "This keeps happening to me." First, it's this, then it's that, and then the next thing happens, and it's the T square unfolding. Mm-hmm. And um, well, you get it with other patterns, but T square yeah. specifically, yeah. because the energy of the planets, Chiron is always triggered first. Yeah then the moon, and then uh, Pluto in his particular chart. Now, of course, we don't know his inner working, but we can only assume being his dramatic artist is like what he is. Oh, sure. But even when you have Joe Bloggs from next door, and he's got a T-square, and he's saying, and I took her on a date, and then this happened, and then she dumped me, or whatever. And the pattern remains. Or the, yeah, the job thing, or the The job thing. thing, yes. Or the... You know, the sibling drama or the competitive com- competition for yes. whatever. Yeah. And this pattern, yeah. the patterns in T-squares are themes in a life yeah. that continue to be played out. And as an astrology, if you can see them and sort of give some interpretation to them, you can make a good connection with your clients because you're able to say, first it's Chiron, then it's the moon, then it's Pluto, and the pattern remains. Yeah. So... Um, and also, I mean, that would be a great uh, pulling in that that rectification thing. If someone has a T square in their chart, that might be a a great way to help rectify their chart because then you'd be able to really pinpoint events, yes, re- reactions to events. When yes. when has this pattern occurred where there was like in this example a Chiron Moon yeah. Pluto yeah. thing? And with T squares, because you've got to say the Sun, Mercury, and Venus, they're going to hit this T square every three months throughout the person's life, wow. never mind the other planets. Yeah. So this becomes a theme, and you say, oh, well, 
Bill's always like that. First it's this and then it's that. Then he dumps them, yeah. uh, you know, right. or whatever it is. But you see it in the pattern. Yeah. So it's always very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so we're just going to have a, a quick look at another chart that we have here of um, yeah. a guy who has two T-squares. Yeah. And this is actually somebody that um, Arwen knows. And uh, the first T-square, let's do it one at a time. So the first T-square is um, Jupiter is the focal planet at 23 Taurus. And then Mars at 23 Leo is opposing Saturn at 28 Aquarius. Yeah. So this then is a fixed T-square. Fixed T-square, yeah. Rigid, fixed, yeah. unmovable. Yeah. And if we wanted to calculate the um, uh, empty space, that would be somewhere in Scorpio at around, I haven't done the math, it's going to be around... 24 to 25 degrees Scorpio. Yeah. So I don't know if um, his partner has any uh, points or planets at that position. He does not. No. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, so what we've got here is that what we were saying was that the energy of Mars opposing Saturn, I mean, that can't be easy. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of those classic, <laughs> that, that push-pull, right? Yeah. It's the two the two malefics. The, the lesser malefic and the greater malefic yeah, yeah. are in cahoots in this opposition. Yeah. And they are both channeling their energy towards good old Jupiter in Taurus in the seventh house. Yeah. Now, this tells us straight away that it's going towards the partner. Yeah. Uh, the, the serious uh, commitment partner and it's Jupiter there too. Yeah. So if we wanted to look at um, the, the, this would then this T square will again be triggered every three months as the Sun and Mercury and Venus come round. Mm -hmm. But we, let's just look at for our sequence here. So what we have is we've got uh, Jupiter is at twenty three thirty, but Mars is at twenty three forty five. So Jupiter comes first, and then Saturn is at twenty eight. Yeah. So what we're saying is that in this T square, in this particular T square known as the Jupiter T square, because that's the focal planet. Mm -hmm. Jupiter's triggered first, then Mars, and then Saturn. Yeah. So off the top of my head, this would then be some, some big idea, great expectation, some vision, some idea, or let's, some big thing going on arrives in the, in the mind. Yeah. And he's perhaps talking about, hey, we should do this great big thing, and this is, we're going to, you know, we're going to be millionaires. We're going to do this. That's Jupiter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next step then is Mars, which is, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take action. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. We've got to drive here, do that, buy this, do that, meet with Bob. And I've got to get out there and do all this stuff. Yeah. That's the Mars action. And then the third step would then be the Saturn, which is consolidation yeah. of this project. Yeah. So we could assume that this is how... This T square unfolds in his life that yeah. it's Jupiter. Hey, this sounds like a great idea. Hey, let's go and do the bloody blah. Yeah. Yes, we'll come for dinner, this and that. Yeah. Next thing, um, Mars is triggered and saying, okay, we need to do this. I've got to do that. We've got to do the next things, get these, make these connections. I'll get the, get the boys involved, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And then Saturn is, yes, let's, let's nail it down. Yeah. Let's commit to this and let's do it. What I'm seeing too, interestingly, and this is something that, that because I'm not a consulting astrologer, and and what I see is 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 um is almost like I see charts in a very fragmented kind of way. Like yeah. I'm not I'm not so you are very accustomed to putting things together and seeing a holistic picture, and I'm more like I, I come at things like looking at the the picky little details and yeah. it. But when I'm looking at it in a holistic way, one of the things that I see with that, which is kind of maybe it's true, maybe it's not, or maybe it's just one of those like in. Uh, uh, intuitive truths, right? Is like Jupiter being the focal point means that Mars and Saturn are both closer to Jupiter than Mars is to Saturn. So that Jupiter to Mars thing is a quick transition. So that yes. transition from the thought to the action is pretty quick. Correct, because it's they're like, both at 23. And it might take the, the partner or, or other people around this person by surprise. It's like, oh, wow, you just had this idea and now you're okay. Wow, okay, we're changing gear. You're doing this thing. Yes, we're changing cool. gear. What's happening? Yes. And then the, the shift to the Saturn part where it's the consolidating and the making it real, it's a longer Time period. Yeah, time yeah. period. But also... It's five it's, degrees different. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's like... There, there might be like a, a delay there where there's like the, the thought and the action and then there's all this kind of kerfuffle and yes. settling of something. The dust and settles. I, and Yeah, and I'm wondering also if that other T-square, because there's two T-squares that are, that are in this chart, I'm wondering how that will interact with this because that is really interesting dynamic. 
And obviously not every big idea that someone has that they get all excited about is going to come to fruition, right? Because exactly. Saturn is not only about consolidation, it's also about the reality check. Yes. But the energy will be put into it because Mars is there. Yeah. So if someone said, hey, why don't we, because it's partnership, yeah. hey, why don't we go, I don't know, to Seattle for the weekend and go and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The action's there. Yes, let's do this. Let's yeah. do that. Let's do the next thing. Yeah. And it's mobilizing. It's, it's like, it, okay. the, the plan gets in position. Yeah. But there might be a delay because Saturn's there, but it yeah. will happen. Yeah, yeah. So even though the talk might be, hey, let's go to Hawaii, yeah. it may only happen in eight months' time. Yeah. But the plan and the the energy and the action is happening, yeah. and it, Mars is the plan that gets you off your backside. So, totally. you know, something... And in this from, case, it's in the 10th house, so that's great. I mean, it's a great placement for Mars. Exactly. Yeah. But all of this is focused on that 7th house, which is, as we all know, yeah. your main partnership. Yeah. Partnerships so, and business partnerships, but also it's interesting that it's in Taurus because yeah. that is, uh, I mean, that's a that's an auspicious kind of placement. I think Jupiter and Taurus. Yeah, that's yeah. Value, uh, value for the partner. Yeah, yeah. He, he clearly it's, values his partner yeah. and has some brilliant ideas about let's do this, let's do yeah. that. Who knows what the ideas are? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they'll be talk about action will be taken. Yeah. Um, you know, let me open the app, let me add the group, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then later on, it takes a while for it to actually come in to be cemented. Yeah, it's interesting. We've talked about Jupiter in the past, but one of the things I find with Jupiter in Taurus, and I don't know how you feel about this, but one of those things is like, regardless of how much money you make or have, you never feel poor with Jupiter in Taurus. Yeah, of there's, course always not. This there's always this extravagance, there's always a celebration, there's always just this. You know, let me pay for dinner. Yeah, like, or even if you just, you know, like, your last like ten dollars or twenty dollars or whatever, you know, like, uh, you know, whatever that is, like, let's make the most of it. Let's just, you know, let's live. Let's live. Let's like light some candles or, you know, this is not McScrooge McDuck person. It's someone who's got ideas. Yeah. And wants to live life to the full. And you know, feel the feel the blood pumping. Yeah, um, and then maybe reality does set in. Yeah, but but, but Saturn helps to, to to cement that plan and to, yes. to anchor it in something yes. real and to and to make it relevant. Yes. Yeah. So this will be a pattern. This is the one pattern that's coming through the T square where it's Jupiter, Mars, Saturn is the sequence yeah. for life. It's built into the natal chart. Excellent. So that's the first T square. Yeah. And the next T square. Yeah. So let's just have a look at the next T square because we can. Yeah. So now we've got a T-square between, now Mars is the focal planet, yeah. Mars in Leo, what we just spoke about. And then we, we've got Jupiter in Taurus, that's still part of this T-square, but Jupiter is now opposing Neptune. Yeah, yeah. All right, so now they're at a different, they're at different degrees because the first planet on the earlier degree is now Neptune yeah. at 16. So in this T-square, what's happening is Neptune is triggered then then Mar- then Jupiter's triggered and then Mars. Yeah, and that Neptune is in the first house. As well. Yes. So yeah. Neptune's there in Scorpio in the first house, uh, mm-hmm. maybe triggering their partners, uh, Scorpio planets in some way. So here, Neptune is triggering the whole sequence. Yeah. So what's happening is Neptune is, hey, I got this idea. I got this, you know, uh, someone was talking to me and I heard a thing. Had and a I, oh, I, I, I had a drink and I was chatting to the guy in the bar and then I saw this artwork and I thought, blah, 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 blah. And there's some imagination and that is yeah. being brought forward. Um, and that's the first step because that's Neptune. Then we move on to the Jupiter, which is the same pattern in the other as yeah. the other T-square. Jupiter then comes up and saying, hey, yeah, we could do this. We could do that. Let's get the hot air balloon. Let's do the Jupiter thing. And it continues on. And then finally, the last planet in this uh, sequence is Mars in Leo, which is the actual action on it. Yeah. So the the sequence here is Neptune, Jupiter, Mars. And we know Jupiter, Mars from before. Yeah. And so what's happening is the inspiration comes. We've got some great big ideas. Let's, let's you bounce, know. Bounce them off of the partner. World domination. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to do all the, we're going to go there and break eggs with big sticks and then somehow we're going to put it out into this 10th house position of mars in leo in the 10th house yeah in the 10th house so this pattern gets triggered every three months as the sun mercury and venus come through so this pattern continues now because this t-square overlaps the first t-square with the jupiter mars 
I propose that if I was, if this was my client, I would say there's a full blown pattern here. Yeah. It's a four step pattern. Yeah. It's Neptune, Jupiter, Mars, Saturn. Yeah. That is the pattern. Yeah. It's not a grand cross, right. but the pattern remains. Yeah. So it begins with Neptune. And the reason, like for anyone who's not casting this chart and playing along at yeah. home, is because that Neptune is at 16 mm -hmm. Scorpio and that Saturn is at 28. Aquarius. Yeah. So those are 12 degrees, degrees apart. They're never going to be no. square. If they were a square, if they were just a couple degrees, you know, inch towards the left and right, then that would be a grand cross. And we would then be, it's more rigid. We would have a whole different conversation. Happening. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So here, because he's got the two T squares overlapping, this is why I would, if I, if this was my client, yeah. I would be saying he's got a four planet sequence. Yeah. Versus Neptune, he gets inspiration. Yeah. It has a drink, call it what you has, whatever. Dream a drink, uh, yeah, has a whatever. cigarette. Yeah. The plan comes, the idea arrives, Percolate. the muse appears. The muse appears. The yeah. Neptune thing happens. Then it goes to the Jupiter. Yeah. Hey, let's do this great big thing and we can blah, blah, blah. Yep. The vision is there, the hot air balloon, let's launch it. Yep. Then we move on to Mars action. Yep. And it's, of course, it's 10th hour, it's all happening there. Yeah. And then finally, after that, we get the Saturn, the consolidation. Yeah. This then is fourth house, and it's brought. It's like bringing the chickens Bring home, home to bringing the chickens home to roost. Yeah, because it all comes back to home. It all comes back yes. to home. that. It's it's got to be good for for the home, for the future, for for the family, for the family, yeah. and for consolidating it into something real and concrete for the future. Yeah. yeah. So you've got this pattern uh, that continuously is being triggered by yeah. transits, and the pattern is Neptune, Jupiter, Mars. Saturn. Amazing. So yeah, you really you, cool. you meet the guy and he's saying, "Hey, I got this idea and I so I had some inspiration and you know maybe I work at the art gallery and there's art and there's music and yeah. and it's playing the guitar and God knows what." Yeah. And from there, it all starts and bring in to the partner unfold. and then bring in the action. Yes. And I know some, I know a guy. I got a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy. Exactly. Yeah. And then yeah, it becomes a thing. So this is how you want to look at T-squares, that yeah. it's not just a, an old T-square stuck in your chart. Right. You've got to say, what's the story? And the story is the sequence yeah. that the planets are triggered at all the time. Yeah, and also because because we are trying to talk to people at you know the beginner and the intermediate and the advanced levels of astrology, if you're looking at your chart and you're seeing, oh, geez, I have a T-square. I've heard, I've heard that's a, a bad you know a pattern. Oh, that's that's, you know... Oh, that's where my trauma comes from. Oh, yeah. ooh, this is this is action. This, this is, is how you live your life. This is yeah, exactly. This is where ideas come from, where ideas come to fruition. If you have nothing but grand trines or trines or sextiles, I mean, yeah. you're lying in your hammock, dude. Yeah, you're lying you in your hammock. You're just happy. You're fine. Like yeah. you don't need it. You know, to do working anything. on your tan, lying in your yeah, hammock. Yeah, I mean, who who doesn't love a tan? But I mean, yeah, oh, like, yeah. There's, this is a this is a chart of action, and uh, it is yeah. And so, if you have T squares, if you have squares, if you have whatever oppositions, don't think of them as like a negative. Uh, no, know. don't. No, it's it's driving your life. It's like trigger planets and yeah. trigger sequences yeah. that are steps that you are continuously taking, which you may not even see until yeah. the astrology points them out. You might not know why this pattern keeps coming yes. in your life. You say, well, my life's like this. This is always happening to me. And that's your T-squares talking. Yeah. So it's a very interesting thing um, to interpret T-squares and people know about them because these are the tough aspects. They've been wrangling with them since the day they were born. Yeah. This is not some obscure thing in a chart. Yeah. This is right there. They're having to deal with it. And um, yeah. if you yourself actually connect to somebody's T-square, maybe your son is conjoined them or your chart ruler is conjoined part of this T-square, you're also going to trigger their T-square and it's like kick-starting the action. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah. It's almost like a, a pattern is unfolding. It's like um, I knew a woman who every time she got a new car, it was broken into and the radio was stolen. <laughs> And I used to say, well, who wants a radio? But And I had a car, and it was never broken into, but she, every time she got a car, she'd had it a week, someone broke in and stole the radio. Wow. Back in the day when we had radios. Yeah, right. And every single car she had, and it she, it was a pattern in her life. It was a small pattern, but these, these are how it goes, yeah. Huh. So, yeah, so T-squares are super interesting in that way. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so we've been chatting about T-squares, Arwen yeah. and I. Yeah. 
We've explored um, what T squares are, how to find them, how they can be expressed. We've spoken about the empty space, which needs to be calculated, and um, the actual sequence of energy that is expressed through transits and, of course, progressions, but through transits yeah. mainly. And the, there's a pattern. And if you can find and weave a story regarding whatever the planets are, Neptune, Jupiter, Mars, yeah. Saturn, for and it's example. based on the degree. Yes. Yeah. So the earliest degree would be the first of them and then the next and then the next and the next. Yes, because yeah. that's how they would be triggered yeah. every time a planet comes by, which is all the time. Yeah. Um, and you can, if you as an astrologer can find some story to say about this, yeah. um, you can make a good connection with your clients. And if nice. they're in your chart, certainly oh understand God. your T-squares yeah. because why wouldn't you? We're all living with them if you've got them. Absolutely. As I said, Arwen and I don't have any. But um, yeah. we do know people who do. Most people, well, I wouldn't say most people, a lot of charts, 80% of charts, I think, yeah. would have a T-square. Yeah. I have my hands full with my squares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So if you found value in this episode, please do consider um, sharing it with anybody who'd be interested. Yeah. You are welcome to email us at starsology at gmail.com. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you can click the top link and send us a text directly with any questions. Um, please do consider following Arwen. I'm at mspink.net. That's M-S-P-I-N-K.net. And I'm talking about art and books and movies and TV shows and politics and sociology and nostalgia and lots of good things. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. So do do consider following Arwen there. So I just want to thank you, Arwen, for joining me again on this podcast. Thank you. It's been great. It's been great having you. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you next see time. You next time. Thanks so much for getting this far through the episode. I just want to take a moment to tell you about the two main options of my astrology services. So the first one is coaching. If you are an aspiring astrologer, and by that I mean someone who's perhaps a hobbyist astrologer or someone who's learning astrology or a student, or you've got a few books and you've been doing it for a while, but perhaps you need a little bit of help to bring it all together then maybe getting some astrological coaching from me would be the answer for you. The astrology coaching I offer is a one-hour session on Zoom and it's tailored to answer your particular questions. For example, if you have issues with natal chart readings, we can go there. Or if you're having problems working with your forecasting, we can go there. Or even basic astrology stuff, or even getting yourself organized for your astrology business. The idea is that astrological coaching will answer your particular questions. It's tailored specifically to you and where you are in your astrological journey. And I'm happy to help you out with some guidance about how you can get going, what to focus on and what to dismiss. So that would be the astrological coaching for people trying to learn astrology. The second astrological service I offer is consultations. So this is for someone who perhaps doesn't know anything about astrology, but they just want to have their chart read or get their chart done. Call it what you will. So once more, this is a one hour consultation over Zoom. I will interpret your chart, tell you about the main features, tell you about where the energy is flowing and all the rest of what is entailed in a thorough natal chart interpretation. I can also add in some forecasting in there too, bearing in mind we only have one hour. So just in summary, I've got coaching for people who want to learn astrology and I've got uh, consultations for those who want to get an astrology reading done. I'm Alison Price from starsology.com. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time.